my name is Oscar Herrera. Um, I have this sort of side company called Spin Alley. I've been in bands, and I've performed music, written songs. I've always been into music. But what I do is take um, record players or radios that I, that I find or buy off of eBay and restore them, and I sell them online at spinalleystore.com. And I also restore record players and radios for people. This is kind of like what they look like when, we, when I first get them. I like to find them fairly used, and they usually take about a month to two to repair. A lot of these record players use tubes, which are these glass elements that go inside. That was the original technology. And these tubes, sometimes you find them on the internet through eBay, and it's new old stock, which means these tubes were sitting around in some radio repair shop for 40 or 50 years, never sold, brand new, still in the original box, and you can buy them. It tells you if it's good or not. And this one is good. Capacitors, resistors, all the parts that go inside, needles, there's everything can be found online. The father of records is Thomas Edison. And the first kind of records were these, which are cylinders. And the word record is from Latin ricordi, which means to remember. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, the seven, first eight, discs rock. that were developed were, uh, when it became standardized, it was 10 inch. This is a 10 inch 78, which means 78 revolutions per minute. And then there was 12 inch, and the 12 inch is usually used for classical music. Columbia Records in the late 40s developed the first LP, and then RCA Victor, to compete with Columbia, developed the first 45, which was 45 revolutions per minute, and that was a 7 inch record. So it became 7 inch, 10 inch, and 12 inch. Radio kind of started taking over, and people in the recording industry thought that radio was going to take over records completely. And what record phonograph companies started doing is combining both, radios and record players. Vinyl is actually growing in sales. Where CD sales are, are plummeting, vinyl sales have slowly been growing, and the market that's really buying it is the young market. There's nothing like the crackle of the little, you know, the needle when it hits the grooves. You, know, you put on these records, it's, God, it sounds so good. <laughs> and I'm a strong believer in, you really need to listen to the record on the record player that it was made for. If the record is from the 50s, listen to it on a record player made in the 50s. There's nothing like it. It's something that sweeps over you.